counselor in my whole time of being homelessness that actually got in with me and act like she cared. The rest of them was like, they did not care. I knew they did not care. I do not, I know they did not want to see me succeed out of this um, position that I am and go forward. And that's a lot of what I find. Uh, people are willing to, to give you, um, uh, like, I, now I find myself, um, because I need some kind of finances, to try to pull me out. So I got my little son, of course. This is a new one. Your son, you said? Sign. Oh, sign. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is say? a new one. This one new one here, because I got sick of saying, uh, which they don't like these. They don't like stuff that says positive stuff. They want you to say hungry outside, mm. uh, hungry, homeless. They want you to say stuff like that. And this one says, hello, so, this is my fundraiser for Better Life. If you can help or will, I hope. My God, uh, may God bless. Okay. Right. Yeah. And um, so they, I, I got a kind of okay response when I did went out. Because I always test them out to see how they don't work. It don't work, like I said. You know, oh. It does not work at all like the, like I said, a more pitiful sign. And, um, which I think is, I think it's horrible. It is sitting there for a second. And, but either way, okay, I had a job before I came homeless. <laughs> what was your job? My job was driving the bus at the airport for Delta. Cool. Contract through AirServe, a company called AirServe. Uh, same as my colleagues that worked with me, because I had just, I, everything was just starting for me all over, because I was coming off of crack cocaine yeah, okay. of um, at least about 15 or more years, wow. and God was de de totally delivering me, and when I say totally, yes, he have totally now wow. delivered me, because really? I'm like, I, I know now, I didn't know then when I started that if I go back, it's going to be on me. Um, and I went through, uh, what happened was, I had already went through a program, and I relapsed. And I tell everybody, goodness and mercy was two officers, because I decided I was going to sell my body uh, to get drugs. Because that was the only way I could get them, because I wasn't going to go back to try to drive. Mm -hmm. With my CDLs, cause I didn't want to mess them up, mm -hmm. and I didn't, and I couldn't get jobs at the um, at the little fast food restaurant. So I'm like, okay, and I was doing dope. So I'm I'm out there now. I'm back out there again, and and it's worse than it was at first. You mean the, the industry or no me smoking, it me getting high? It's worse on your body or it's no? Just it's more worse difficult? on my mind. Ah, difficult to resist. And no, yeah, just just to keep focus. That uh, or to say, okay, I ain't got to have it today. I can go and do my eight-hour shift. I'm not gonna. Do, I wasn't gonna do it. It wasn't gonna happen. Oh, when you were working, you could right. resist it better. Right. Yeah. Uh, before, uh, you know, before yeah. I went went out, uh, I was okay because I worked it for like three years. Yeah. And I was doing great, but for some reason, I decided that um, I think I my mind told me that hey. Everybody need change. Y'all need change too, cause I change, and I want y'all. I want y'all to come over here too, you know. And I, I did not realize that nobody had to change but you, cause this is your life. Hmm. You cannot make these people. These people have right to do what it. You gonna get mad cause they can go drink, smoke, and do what? Okay, well, baby, go right ahead, and we are gonna see where you gonna end, because their stuff might look good. You don't know exactly what they got going on. You don't know how they're getting it. And you got to be willing to probably get it the way they get it or even worse. Yeah. You know, and uh, unfortunately with uh, using, my mind doesn't function. Because I was already supposed to have a low IQ as far as functioning anyway. Okay. So, that it did not go. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so... I ended up um, struggling after I got I, I, Well, first they arrested, uh, two guys, officer arrested me. Now, believe it or not, at that time, reason I said it was goodness and mercy, these people 
they, they, I remember I said these people because I don't know who it was. The officers you're talking about? No, I'm talking about other people, oh, the okay. guys, other people, whoever these girls was meeting. Now I'm doing the same thing they're doing. We're going out, we're going to try to hustle. Well, that's what you call it now, hustle, I guess. Mm -hmm. But to get some money, to get dope. And that's basically was all I was going really to do or eat, whatever, you Did know. Hook, meaning hookery? Or, yeah. Okay. Or, it wasn't really prostituting to me, but either way, they call it ottery lottery. That at that time, I don't know what they call it now. Ottery lottery. Yes, it means that you're standing in one place, and you're you're um, kind of like panhandling with your body uh -huh. to get somebody to pay you to um, um, because you're not making that much money. You're not making like a, a, a prostitute, your baby. So they can't call you a prostitute. So it's another lower class name at that time. I don't know what they call it now okay. uh, for saying you was prostitute. Hmm. For listening okay. to sick, they don't put the other part on it. And so uh, it's just like um, a pan. Yeah. They now they don't charge you for lottery and lottery. They charge you for see they would charge me for lottery and lottery for pan Wow. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that's was at that time, but now they call it. Uh, I just, I think they just call it panhandling or something else. I don't forget what the officer told me. But anyway, I end up doing that after three years, almost four years of recovery. Now I would have had a total of like twenty something years, I think, right now with with the fifteen years I already have now. But I re end up relapsing, so I don't count all of those years because I got now. And. Um, I was, um, these girls was going out, and I was too, and they was getting, uh, in, I don't know, was they getting in trouble, or was just a mad person was out there. They was getting their necks cuts, they were getting their pipes stuck up their butts, they was getting hung from trees. Whoa. Yeah, it was some deep stuff going on, and I mean, it was real deep. And one night, me and another girl that would come to my apartment, believe me not, I had an apartment. <laughs> yeah. I was still tripping on that one. The girl would come to my apartment, you know, sometimes bring her friend because she would not want to pay at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was a little bit more cheaper <laughs> than the hotel. And, you know, she wasn't going to get cooked out like the hotel. So she would come every now and then over to the house, to the apartment, and bring her friend. And, um, but either way, the, um, me and her was out there at like maybe three or four o'clock in the morning. And it was like an eerie s s uh, spirit went cross. And we looked at each other. And she said, I was scared. She said, did you feel that? I was like, I'm scared to say something. I was wondering, did you feel it too? And she said, yes. She immediately, <laughs> I don't know, she like, she just disappeared on I me. Mean, I'm like, oh She's great. Split, huh? Huh? She split, huh? Right, and I'm standing there like, okay, God, oh. <laughs> I'm standing here by myself after that. I'm immediately so interested in going to get another dope hmm. to I'm not even hearing what God is trying to tell me. I mean, you could be next, you know? How you know that wasn't the demon of death finna destroy you? So either way, Somehow it was ostracized for me to. Uh, 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 one of the people that usually get high with me come through, and they, they we call it female at that time. I don't know what they call female. Female. Meaning you just got to have you something. You got to have. Yeah. I don't know what they call it yeah. now. Okay. And I don't know what they call it before then, but that's what we called it, female. And I just need, I need a fix. I think that's what okay. they used I to call it, fix. Saying. I get your need, fix. Yeah, I just okay. needed to get me something, and one of them knew me from getting high and they knew what you know what the deal was and they just gave me like a, a 10 or 20 uh rock okay. to go get high okay. that's pretty and, small yeah that's that's real for a dope addict yeah okay. <laughs> you feel like you can smoke up a room you know but yes that's pretty small at that time now today it's smaller what i understand from what i had but yeah that was pretty small for okay. a dope thing <laughs> but it it helps so you won't have the theme and won't have to be, you know, doing and doing. If yeah. you don't get the something that makes you rush. Mm. And that was my problem. Mm. I, it, I always got something that make me want to just go. Get the rush. Yeah.
Oh, which one? Oh, I got. Oh, I got. Go give me another one now. Oh, okay. You know. So, but anyway, um, I end up getting arrested. I end up spending a year in Atlanta, uh, DeKalb Detention Center, uh, at a place at a uh, uh, um, at a place where well, they have had at that time a, a thing called Women for Women, and it was supposed to be like a drug rehab inside jail, and that's what the judge decided for me. Okay. Instead of going to treatment outside. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out at the time when he did it, why? And once I got out, I, I guess it kind of all counts a little bit clearer, which oh, I, I didn't see. feel like. I think I was not ready because if I still was thinking that everybody need to stop drinking and smoking cigarettes because I was one because I needed to stop drinking and smoking. I had not realized why I wanted to stop or why I needed to stop using drugs. And believe it or not, when I started back 14 years ago, I did not still. Once I got in and started getting clean, I still did not know why I needed to stop using drugs. I just knew I, I wanted to. Mm. And, the, and the more I have went through homelessness, I know why I must. Because I'm like, okay, first of all, you're too far down the road. You don't have your, you don't have your, edge, you know, a, a certificate to show that you finished school. You don't have this. You don't have that. And so, with what you do have, you're gonna have to work with it. And staying clean mm -hmm. is what working for you. Yeah. If you if you go back and use, it's not gonna work for you all the yeah. way around. Yeah. Because the longer you stay clean, the worse it is when you go back to use. It is true. Mm -hmm. I don't see too many people. And I mean, I told them I said, with the knowledge and information God has set in my mind. And have, I mean, I think I'm more smarter now than I've ever been in my whole life. I'm not talking about just because I'm not used. I'm talking about for reading, yeah. comprehending, just being able to do and take care of myself. I think I'm just, you know, real smart. And I'm like, oh, God, you have really changed my life in that way, if nothing else. And I know, and he, I know I trust him to take care of me. It's no more like... If I got a house and they fired me on my job, I would sit and be afraid that I'm not gonna be able to pay my lights, my water, and my gas. I would not even be afraid that, I think I would be a little afraid if it started to look like I'm gonna lose the house, maybe. But God would have to remind me, now I stayed in a house, that I still have the address, and I don't stay there and I don't want the house. Why not? Because I caught, I, caught so much trauma from the people who whoever these people are and I don't know them I just know some of their names that that felt like I should go back and use drugs from the past oh. based on my past I have a lot of people who knew who knew about my past that felt like that's the way I supposed to live and I have been kind of like in a warfare against with them and their friends to prove that I don't know where you're getting this. Why you feel like I supposed to be the one that used drugs when I wasn't, when you decided that I was going to use drugs. Yeah. I could see if I came in here started using drugs. And I'm like, when you picking up, you picking up before I came. And see, when I came, I went to a, a, a program called, uh, after I left Women for Women, after the judge released me, he had me issued to another drug outside program, which was uh, at that time Phoenix Alliance on Memorial. And I went there and I stayed there almost a year. And the only reason I left there and I talked to my counselor about it. I did not just up and say, oh, I'm leaving. This ain't working, you know, I got to go. No, I talked to my counselor and we both came to the conclusion. I told her why. I said, one, I can't pay the, pay the uh, fee. Uh, for I understand that uh, women for women, she said no, it was running out. That my you know funds was running out, and I and the only way they was going to attain those funds, if I could uh, get a job with 35 hours. I, my job I had was only 25 hours that I had, and and it wasn't enough. 
And when I lived there, the job yeah. ended up firing me. So I had to find me a new job, which at that time, during them like three or four years after I left the program, I did find little pieces of job, you know, to kind of yeah. keep me up a little bit. And then after that, it was just, I mean, maybe about five years after that, everything started going down. I mean, like a, a rocket ship, you know, and it was just it was going down and down and down and down. It's like impossible. I'm willing to work, God. It is no reason nobody would not let me sweep or something and pay me an hourly salary. That's what I was getting. And it was like, I don't, and I knew, I did not know what was going on. So I just kept the faith that things was going to eventually change for me um, financially, but it didn't. It didn't, and it still really haven't. I mean, right now, my a little bit, but not like, I, I mean, like I tell people, I say, okay, you ain't got to worry about the winter. You ain't got to worry about if you're going to eat. You ain't got to worry about where you're going to bathe. You ain't got to worry about nothing right now. Today, I know for a fact, they went in my storage, where I'm storing my stuff. And they, that's what it is. Everywhere I go, someone decides that they can go in my storage. They decide they can go in my house. They, I mean, the house I was in, they went in that. And it's like, they get away with this. And they, my identity is just like, it's just like I'm not existing anymore. Did and your identity get stolen? Or? Yes. It's being stolen right now. And every time I turn around, it's something else. Like, for instance, I, I, the, they, they made sure. They went in my locker. The, I call it a locker. I got me a, the late One lady got me a storage over there. My stuff ended up getting, they end up, I end up had to get my stuff pulled out. That's the story. A, a whole day before it was supposed to be put out. I mean, you know, well, before I had to get it out. Yeah. And I went ahead and came out the storage and I'm on the streets, and hear these pe hear this guy say he's work for the county. He come in to come assist me, and la la la. Then I had a couple of other folks come by, and now I'm at seventy nine dollars. I got enough to get me a store. Oh, cool. But I had another guy who was gonna, so I'm gonna take that money and wash my clothes and do some work and buy me a car, you know, do some stuff that I need to do to start trying to pull me out of this situation. Yeah. And I was on the bus. And I'm going to go back. But I was on the bus and God said, you know what you need to do? I said, no. He said, you need to go get you a phone hmm. at Walmart. Hmm. I said, oh, yeah, I forgot about that prepaid hmm. phone that they had. And I got enough money. And so I, I dive inside Walmart. I ended up getting a whole total another phone, another kind of phone. But it's a phone. And that's what's supposed to be one of the Hi, things. Hi, Kayla. How are you? Hi, good. Um, are those you great? Uh, yeah, they are. Heck yeah. What's your name? Pamela. Um, Kayla, I want you to meet Pamela. She's homeless, and um, really? we're wow. talking. I'm recording her story so I can um, put nice it and tell people about Kayla. her. Yeah, nice. But my shirt, when y'all see me, uh, volunteers going to say cookie lover. Cookie lover? Yeah. It's oh, like I have my she's name volunteering on. at the festival. Really? Yeah, I yeah. had nothing else to do, so. Yeah, thank you. Um, so cool. Do you want... I don't know, with your project, do you get people's contact information so you can find them later or for your Christmas present project? Or yeah. is there any way Yeah, we could... to make sure that we get connected. Yeah, is that the best way to do it? Yeah. Um, okay. And then I can send you an email about what we're doing. Maybe you can help So out. do you want to tell okay. about your project really quick? Yeah. So basically, um, oh, I'm wanting to give 300 um, of my books, 300 composition notebooks, you know, that you can write in and then 300 writing pens to 300 um, friends that are currently stuck in a place of homelessness um, is Christmas gifts. Because um, oh, wow. it's inspired from the story of um, one time I was going to school at Georgia State and I was walking to class and I, had saw, the, I saw this lady that was sitting on the side of the road. She had like her bags and she was kind of covered up with blankets and stuff. And um, 
I was walking, I was about to, I saw her in the distance and my thought was, oh my goodness, you know, she's going to ask me for money and I don't have any money and I'm not ready to feel guilty about this. You know, those little thoughts. Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know, yeah. See, I'm homeless There's now because so I'm thoughts. like, I don't know. I mean, because one guy I was like, I don't understand why people don't ask you when they come to help you. Um, I had been sitting outside for a long time. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what, why didn't they ask me, did you need any cold water? I said, but they asked right. me on the expressway. Right. When I'm standing on that right. panel and I got plenty of water. Because yeah. I don't have my things to have to uh -huh. worry about. And it's like, it's kind of backwards to me. And I'm like, it That's didn't make sense. That's because of my own arrogance. And he said, right. no, no, no. He said he went in total shock. That's what it sounded like, you know, like trauma. Mm -hmm. And I can understand that little period of trauma just hit your brain. Like, oh, my God. I don't have this and I don't have that. And then I, I wanted help, but I can't, you know, right now. And, right. and you know, cause sometimes I have other homeless people ask me. And I'm like, I think they ask you because you don't, they say I don't look homeless. <laughs> I'm like, what does it look like? Tell me what, I'm like, y'all making this sound like it's a disease. And that's supposed to look a certain way. And I don't appreciate that because mm. of people, I'm like, I'm like, what do I supposed to look like? And why do I supposed to look that way? And yeah. I'm, you know, so mm -hmm. nobody can never answer that question after they mm -hmm. say, you know, you don't look homeless. I'm like, okay, I don't understand that because right. you know. I don't think homeless should really be an adjective, right? Associated with the word people, mm -hmm. um, which I just learned being a part of love is a verb. I think that homelessness is just a state, a circumstance you're in, mm -hmm. but that is not oh. you as a person. Right. Ooh. Good point. You are you baby. are a person of courage. You're a person of love. You're a person that gets up every morning like everybody else and goes to sleep like everybody else. And like, so I don't like homeless. I don't either. Adjective. And I think that's what you're saying, mm -hmm. which is so good. Yeah. But anyways, this girl, she she says, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me. I'm like, oh no, I don't have any money. <laughs> but she goes, do you have a writing pen that I can borrow? And I go, um, a writing pen? Like, I was kind of surprised. That's all you like, need. Like, that's all yeah. you want? And so I, like, go to my backpack, you know, off my back, and I look through my backpack, and while I'm looking, I'm like, why do you need a writing pen? And she said, oh, well, you know, it gets kind of lonely and boring out here sometimes, and so I write little short stories, and you make little journal entries and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I gave her two pens, and I was, I was asking her, you know, are you going to write a book someday? And she said, I don't know, maybe. And I told her, if I ever see her again, I expect the book to be done so I can read it. Wow. She was like, okay. But I haven't seen her since. But that right. story stuck with me, and it happened a year ago. Right. And so, like a month and a half ago, it just came in my head, you know, an idea for Christmas and how I already know that Christmas might look great for me, but what about people that don't get to have Right. A, a cool Christmas experience or have a right. gift or something. So I'm curious, if someone were to randomly ask you what you need most, what would you usually answer? Mostly I, I try to ask them about employment because I'm not handicapped, I'm not unwilling to work, and I need a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So since you cannot afford to let me, um, and I'm not going to go stay at your house unless you got some employment, so I can pay something. Lights, water, yeah. gas, something. I'm not coming to free love. I'm coming in to pull myself out of this situation and, and come independent like I was before the situation started. Mm -hmm. cool. and, and, to keep, and to move forward. So I can, I mean, like I tell them, I still need personal. I still, I, and if I, we don't eat the same thing, I still gonna need to eat. And you're still gonna have lights, water, and gas to pay. So either way it go, I'm still going to need some kind of financial income coming in, which I don't have, but the panhandling. And, and that, that doesn't pay bills, unfortunately, and sometimes it don't even pay a storage. What um, are the skill sets that you are most comfortable with? If someone want you to clean, is that best, or um, right now, manual labor or something? That would... Right now, with this, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, when it comes to... Um, on a personal level, I really would like to work in a warehouse where I don't have to be around a whole lot of people because I, I must give off this error or something because 
people just after they don't been around me, they hate my guts. Oh. <laughs> for real, it's like for real. It seems like after I've been around them, at first it's like, oh, I just like her, and then out the while it's like, I'm like, did, did somebody go Jekyll mm -hmm. her? I, yeah. Right. Was it me or them? I'm not for sure, God, because they're acting funny. I don't care what yeah. you say. You yeah, know, I'm trying to speak like I was, and they're like, don't you speak to me? You know, uh, uh, you can get such and such. Okay, I, I just got to keep my job, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm and sorry. so it's like, okay, this 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 might suck, but you're going to have to hold your breath, bite your teeth, you know what I'm saying? Then they say, I know I ain't got no job. I'm like, oh, great. Thank you very much. I didn't need that. And I'm trying to do this. And I'm like, all right, God. As, uh, we can move on. And we ain't got to yell, scream, and holler and, you know, act out. We just got to understand that that person had something going on. Yeah, and I don't awesome. know what it was. And I, right now, I can't even focus. We could that. all benefit from that sort of thinking, right. just being able to say that's their problem. Right. I just got to do me right now. It took me a long time to get there now because it was yeah. like, should I go back and bang the head or ask women to get off? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> you need food for tonight. Um, I was gonna go to McDonald's. Yeah. I have, I think I have a couple dollars. Okay. I'm gonna buy me something to eat from McDonald's. I'm heading over there after this if you want to go with me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't give out money, but I definitely give out food. <laughs> so if you're lunch, okay with that. Food, so I told myself, you, one thing about it, if you can figure out a way how to sell food yeah, to another right. person, so you, food, you, you still, you still get some money. That's a good. Thing. It's kind of hard if it's not packaged because people don't want to take something that's not packaged. Because it's only a one-time fix. Right. Yeah, one-time solution. <laughs>